So now just to finish up our discussion on carrier-mediated transport, um, we have sort of ran out of room in our previous flowchart. This is just a continuation of Transport 3 summary video, um, just to finish off the video. We talked about facilitated diffusion prior, and facilitated diffusion was a passive transport. And remember, carrier-mediated transport can be both passive and active. Let's look at the active side of carrier-mediated transport. Specifically, this type of carrier-mediated transport is actually called um, very easily named and very uh, easily to understand carrier mediated active transport AT and this of course is active transport so we don't need to we can actually put that down as parentheses as AT no it's a little bit repetitive but get used to it so carrier mediated active transport once again we have to use metabolic energy and specifically we can say that the cell energy um, to do this comes from ATP. So the cell energy from ATP, ATP remember is the energy currency of all cells, it's like their dollar let's say, the money that they can use to do things, to do chemical work. Um, cell energy from ATP is needed. Because it's active transport, you need to put an investment in. This also involves a transport protein and in this situation, the transport protein can be either integral or also transmembrane. Either or. There are instances of both. And in both situations, what we expect to see when we have something dock onto our carrier-mediated active transport mechanism, our active transport protein, we expect that protein to actually change shape, just like we saw in our facilitated diffusion. Um, so now we're going to change the shape once the solute particle, let's say, enters it. The key thing here is that this is the only, this is the first time we're going to see something actually work against the concentration gradient. So it works against concentration gradient. So this is the first time we see this, and it's very interesting. Once you underline against. So what happens here? is that you might be asking, oh, I thought nature wanted everything to be equal and eventually lead to equilibrium. The whole point of carrier-mediated active transport to work against the concentration gradient is to be greedy. There's certain times the body or the cell needs to be greedy. And that means that these are times where you allow stuff, this carrier-mediated active transport is a process that allows, let's just say stuff, chemical things, cell things that are necessary to be stockpiled by cell because sometimes the cell just wants to be prepared and this is what happens. A good example of this is the sodium potassium pump. Na stands for sodium, K stands for potassium pump. This is a very classic famous example of a carrier mediated active transport protein. Basically what happens here is that for every three sodium ions that go out of the cell, they get pushed out of the cell, they get pumped out of the cell, two potassium ions come into the cell. And this is going to cause and create an electrical gradient. And all you need to know about this is that that electrical gradient is something that will eventually down the line allow for, let's say, an action potential to develop. And we don't need to go into the details. This is just a good example of a carrier-mediated active transport. So overall, the major difference here is, of course, this A part right here, active transport. Why is it active? Because we have ATP. ATP, active. Very easy to remember. This is something you have to know. It works against the concentration gradient, and you have to understand why. Sometimes the cell needs to just be greedy and stockpile things more than necessary just in case for some sort of, let's say, problematic reason if something happened. This, I'll tell you, happens in the nervous system. And you can sort of understand that the nervous system is absolutely crucial. Your brain has to constantly be working and functioning. So it makes sense that you have this stockpiling of sodium or potassium in this situation, ions, even though it's out of the or against the concentration gradient, because this is what allows action potentials, which is basically thought to actually work, to allow the nervous system to do what it needs to do. So it makes sense that you have this stockpiling. So that concludes our discussion on carrier-mediated active transport. 
um, and we'll conclude our discussion on transport as a whole by looking at the bulk transport of large molecules in our next flowchart.